Okay, so today we'll explore how to apply form submit validation in Sweet CRM. There are actually multiple ways of doing this, but uh, I found that this is the most optimal one because some of the validation methods, for example, like just to simply check if a value is empty or not, if used um, by using, like basically if we use different methods, it's not going to work. So this is more <coughs> universal. So this applies to a wider range of uh, validation schemes. So the very first thing that we'll do is we'll include our validation JavaScript and uh, we'll put it inside the display method of your uh, view. So in this case, it's a custom view that I've created, but in your case, it could be just uh, you're maybe uh, creating a, a view or rather a custom edit view. So uh, we're not going to go over how to like extend an existing edit view, that's for another tutorial, but uh, that's what you need to do. So you need to extend the existing or a new view and you need to put it inside the custom modules, name of the module, views, and then the name of the view. Then we're going to create the method, the display method, uh, and we're going to call the parent display method inside of it. And here we're going to include our JavaScript. So what we're doing is we're defining the value called uh, JS. <coughs> which contains our validation code. So in this case, it's very complex, uh, but essentially what you could do is you could just put, for example, here, all of this could be replaced, like so, just to show you the example. And it would be, for example, value one. So if value one does not is not empty like this, basically, and value two is also not empty. Then we're going to call our default edit view uh, function that's going to perform uh, the saving of the form. So if other, uh, I mean, if either of those are, uh, are empty, then we're going to basically uh, display an error and return false. So this gives you like a basic idea of how that would work. Then after we define our JavaScript value here, what we will do is we will echo the JavaScript using the uh, basically the basic uh, echo uh, command. So this is the first part of the validation. So we just basically created the validation function, which is uh, here. So custom JavaScript validation. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll actually open up the metadata file for that view and we'll modify the actual save button. The best way I found of doing it is actually copying the, uh, the HTML element in Chrome. So basically I'll right click on that save button and then I'll go to inspect element. Then I would copy all of the code that's found inside of it. And I would put it basically here inside the custom code section, right? So take note of the structure here. So it's um, name of the module, um, name of the view, template meta, form, buttons, zero array, and then we're defining the arrays custom code. So this is going to override the custom code. And the main thing that we did here is basically, this is exactly the same um, as, it, uh, as when it was copied. The only thing that was modified is this part was put in it. So I said, if custom JavaScript validation, and then I basically said that if it passes the validation, then we do the submit. Right, then we do this part here, but only if it passes the validation. So this is the second part of the code. And that's, that's basically the, uh, uh, the high level overview. And this can be used for very simple validation schemes, just basically checking if the value is empty or not. And it can go to basically being very complex validation. Uh, well, I mean, not, not very complex, but uh, something like this, for example. So I wanna make sure that I'll show you this in action. I, for example, want to make sure that my uh, values that were entered into the system are uh, not zero, that they're numeric values and that they're not empty. So basically all of these things need to be true in order for my validation to pass. 
and uh, I can show you an example here. So for example, when I submit, it says, please enter both start and end ranges. So if one of the ranges is missing, it's going to throw an error. If one of the values is not a number, it's going to throw an error. If one of the values is, is a zero, it's going to give us an error also. And as you can see, all of that was defined basically here. So I set my flags initially. So if is zero is numeric is missing, and then I check for example, if both values are numeric, then set the numeric is numeric to true. So we're setting this flag uh, to true. And then here I'm doing the basic validation. So I'm saying if is missing is false. So if nothing is missing, if everything is numeric, if there are no zeros, then go ahead and submit the form. If something is missing, then display the customized error message for when it's missing. If something is zero, then display the zero and return false. If something is numeric, then display, if something is not numeric, then display the appropriate error message and return false also, right? If you found the video at all helpful, please leave a like and subscribe because I'll be making more of these in the future. And don't forget to check out the um, the comment, I mean the description, because I'm going to put the link to all of that code here. There's a new forum where basically you can post all of that stuff. Um, so it's pretty helpful. So thank you very much. Take care.